Hi everyone, welcome to this video about reflection, specifically reflective practices and how we can introduce them into our teaching. But first of all, let's think about the role of education generally. We want to encourage our learners to become lifelong learners, to succeed and develop beyond the structure and support of the program, of the organization, of the educator. Therefore, key skills to develop are in collaboration, communication, the ability to critically think and solve problems, and to be creative. And to develop the skill set, we need to move away from a predominantly teacher-led approach to education, in which the students are passive recipients, and we need to move towards a more learner-centered approach to education, in which the educator's role shifts slightly to a more facilitator of learning experiences, and the student's role um, requires more responsibility for their learning and the development of their own personal learning network. That consists of elements such as educators who still play a key role, but also do their peers and content experts. And they engage with learning experiences that are personalized and flexible and help develop some kind of autonomy. However, it's this linking to prior knowledge components that we're interested in today. So how do we activate this prior knowledge and how do we help learners to develop it further? So one approach is to engage in reflective practices such as critical thinking, evaluation, mindfulness, investigation, contemplation. There's no one definition of reflection. And if we engage in reflective practices as educators for self-development, we can then also support our students in the act. Reflective practice has an important role in learning as it can help provide the bridge between the theory and the practical experience. It can support learning and skills development, including metacognition and creativity that lead to lifelong learning. Also, students can get immersed in the doing and we have to make sure that they stop, reflect, and make meaning out of the process. This can be helpful for students who are more introverted or naturally reflective to feel like they have a chance to step back from the action, to think about what they are learning. I know personally I like the opportunity to stop, reflect, process before compiling my thoughts and opinions on something. It can also be helpful for students who are naturally more active or extrovert to slow down to think about how to make connections and, and analyze the course content through reflection. It can also be helpful for students who are a bit more active and extrovert just to slow down, to think about how to make connections and analyze the course content through reflection. We can all get overwhelmed and feel burnt out when doing too many activities too often. So taking quiet time combined with time for a reflective activity can help students make sense of what they've learned. To assess the information, to identify gaps in their knowledge and where they need more examples or resources. So to help with this process I wanted to introduce this short activity that can be easily implemented. It's called the Read, Record, Reflect, Review and Report or the RRRRR activity which makes me sound like a bit of a pirate. Um, but it just consists of read. So it can be challenging to get our learners sometimes to engage with readings and engage with the literature. So this first component is obviously identifying what you want them to read. Is it an article? Is it a chapter? Is it a blog post? Whatever it may be, curate that content and make it available to the learners. And then ask students to record any interesting points, anything that they agree with, anything that they disagree with, anything that they find confusing. So this is where you can provide some guiding questions to help with the process. How they record it can be dependent on the environment that they're in. So this technique could be used in a synchronous or live session um, in which recording could take place um, via a piece of paper, or it could take place in the asynchronous environment or self-directed environment. So they could record these answers to these questions um, in, a, in a forum or in an e-portfolio, for example. 
And then there's a purposeful opportunity to reflect. What this looks like is dependent on your setting again. So in a classroom setting, it could be um, a pause, it could be a break, it could be um, hearing other people's comments and, and thoughts. It could be through the contribution um, of new information and um, following a slight break to process. Um, and then again, giving the students time to, to think about uh, and reflect on you know what they've contributed so far and there's a review process in which the students can then go back and re readdress or add to or reconfigure um, you know what they've already captured and then there can be a reporting activity to help synthesize and bring this all together um, to share their their findings either with the class with a peer um, with you directly, again, depending on whether it's in a synchronous setting or an asynchronous setting. Um, some tools that could help with this are Flipgrid. So if it's in an asynchronous setting, they could report their findings back through a video. And again, that could um, engage other students to have further reflection um, on their components and add to the conversation. Or you could look at um, a tool called Notion, which is a very flexible tool, which can be used um, in many situations, but in this setting, it could be used almost as an as a e-portfolio or reflective log. So the point of this reflective activity is to guide students through reading for critical analysis, and not just for comprehension. So by slowing down, giving them time to do all of the components um, and encourages them to maybe reread, readjust their thinking and not just react to the activity. So I hope you find this useful and we'll provide more reflective practice techniques in upcoming videos.